Hello everyone, welcome to the Bean Bird 2 channel where we talk about testimonies and the goodness of God. Today I want to talk about something a little bit different. In the news, I saw that they were saying that there's going to be two moons in our orbit. So when I saw that, it caught my attention because it reminded me of two dreams that my kids had about this. Also, a another dream that my daughter had regarding crescent moon and then a vision that my husband had regarding a crescent moon. So altogether there's four different um, things to talk about, three dreams and one vision, all talking about the crescent moon. And so I want to share those with you, um, but before I do, I want to say this disclaimer, I don't claim to be a prophet, I don't claim to have it all figured out, I'm just retelling what we know, which is the dreams that my kids had, the vision that my husband had, and looking at it in light of what's going on in the world around us and seeing the relevance of these dreams today. Okay, with that under the belt, let's talk about this asteroid. It's joining our orbit on September 29th, and it's supposed to be um, circulating around the Earth um, until November 25th. Now, this isn't the first time we have had asteroid debris around the Earth. This has happened before, so the fact that this is happening in itself is not necessarily groundbreaking, but they are calling it a mini moon, and its name is 2024 PT5. That's what they've labeled it. Um, the two, two, 2024 is the year that it was discovered. It was um, first seen last month, and it is going to be too small to see with the naked eye. Um, and so now with that said, I want to um, get into what the dreams are. But before I say that really quickly, I want to just cover what this channel is about, what I'm about. And Acts 2618 states um, the mission that I think God has given me for this channel, which reads to open their eyes in order to turn them from darkness to light and from the powers of um, Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in me. That's why I do this. I'm not looking for entertainment or fame. Um, so that's why I do this. Um, so the first dream my daughter had in November 2021, this is quite a while ago now, um, and I haven't spoke about this since she had this dream. I've just kind of tabled it and I kept it. So she had come downstairs and she told me that she had a dream. And when she was sharing it with me, I asked her to draw it out because I already knew that it had significant symbolism in it. So she did draw it out. And so as I tell the dream, I'm going to put up the pictures that she drew of what she saw in the dream. So the dream began with two white crescent, waning crescent moons um, in the sky behind the trees. And they were next to each other as she drew in this picture. And then as you see below it, there's another picture where she shows that the two waning crescent moons moved together into the middle and together they formed a black moon. And you might be able to see a little bit of a white ring going around the black moon. She said when the two waning crescent moons combined, it turned black and there was a white illumination around the blackness. Now, in the next part of her dream, she saw a dragon, and it was made out of smoke, almost like a cloud vapor. And it was out of our back breakfast nook window. And the reason why that is significant is because the view of the two waning crescent moons that she saw was directionally north in our, from our house. And the cloud vapor of the black dragon appeared in the window of our house that faces east. And so I just want to note that there. So the next scene that she saw in her dream was me and my family in our car traveling. She said we had light luggage and that when we saw the black dragon, we knew it was time to go. And then she woke up. And that was all the information that was in the dream. So she drew it out for me and I put it with my Bible stuff and tucked it away. And so months went by and my son had come downstairs one morning and he said, Mom, I had a dream. Now he didn't know about my daughter's dream and that she had drawn it out all out and stuff. And that was months ago at this point. So it wasn't even fresh news. But he started telling me the dream. And as he was retelling what happened in the dream, 
I was thinking, that sounds a lot like my daughter's dream. So I started going through my stuff and I found the paper that she had drawn and I asked him without showing him the paper, I asked him to draw what he saw in the dream. And when I compared the pictures, they were very similar. They weren't exact, but the ideas were very much um, in unison. So in his dream, he saw directionally north from our house again, the same direction in the same location in the trees north. He saw two waning crescent moons. He said one was black and one was white. And he said he had this knowing that the black crescent moon was a false moon. It wasn't real. And then he saw the black moon um, turn into like a mist or like a cloudy, like a cloud, like a black cloud. And this black cloud traveled all the way around to the back breakfast nook window of our house, which is again, directionally east. And then he had a viewpoint of standing in the breakfast nook window looking out east, and he saw the image of a black smoke dragon. And when he saw the dragon, he knew that it meant that it was time to go. So the next picture he saw in his dream was of our family room with a few suitcases in it. And then he woke up. And when I showed him my daughter's dream, he was amazed at how strikingly similar they were. Both had dragons in the east, both had waning crescent moons, although the way that the crescent moons moved was slightly different. So that was really interesting. So I, again, took that drawing and I put it with my Bible stuff. And a couple months later, my daughter had another dream. This one she said was a little different than usual because she said usually when you have a dream, there's a sequence of events or some sort of storyline of things taking place. She said, but this dream was just a picture. She said, all I saw in the dream was an image. It was like a standing still image. There was no motion, there was no words, it was just a picture. So she saw this picture and very vividly and then she woke up. So I'll put up here what she saw and I asked her again to draw what she saw and this is what she gave me. So she said what it is is a red moon and the red moon was symbolic of the Antichrist rising. And then she had a whole bunch of waning crescent moons and although she drew 20 in the picture, she said that she couldn't count them all because there was many of them. So she said, I just knew there was a lot of them. And she said one of the waning crescent moons was blue. And she said that somehow she knew that the blue crescent moon represented Jesus. So I didn't know at all what that meant, but again, I thought it was significant. So I took the drawing and put it with my Bible stuff. <laughs> so, uh, few months later goes by and my husband is in his office and he had his first vision. He's never had a vision before. He was awake and he said it was the wildest thing. He's like, I was just looking out like, like normal. And then he said, all of a sudden it was like, we interrupt this broadcast to show you this picture. And he just saw this image and he saw in the North where my daughter and my son both saw a waning crescent moon over the trees. And his waning crescent moon was red. And that was all he saw. And then, you know, he came out of the vision. Um, but I know that it was just such an experience for him because every time there's a waning crescent moon, he recalls the vision or he'll mention it and say like, remember when I had that vision and I saw the blood red waning crescent moon. So all three of them saw this waning crescent moon in the same place um, in our neighborhood above the same house directionally north. And so I knew that that meant something. And I see that they, when they started talking in the news about this two moon, um, it made me remember these things. But I know there's a lot of different people who have had dreams out there about two moons and they're all different. But either way around it, we do know that the tribulation is coming soon and the Lord wants us to be prepared, but not in the way that we think of being prepared. To the Lord, being prepared means having our heart aligned with him. And that could mean traveling lightly. It could mean um, stocking up. As we've seen with Joseph, he stored up 
for the seven years of famine to come. But when we saw with Elijah, he was fed by um, birds and the stream that the Lord provided. And we see the widow and the Lord's provision came through those jars of oil. And we see the people, the Israelites, were fed manna that came daily. And so being prepared for what's coming doesn't necessarily mean stocking up. It doesn't necessarily mean hoarding. But I think it does mean that we need to make sure that our hearts are disciplined and aligned with the Lord. And so I was thinking about discipline. And discipline is just the practice of training. Um, practice of training people to obey rules and a code of behavior. Now, Christianity, we're saved by faith through grace, and that salvation is a gift from Jesus, absolutely. It doesn't cost us anything because Jesus paid for everything. But the Christian walk does mean that we walk in obedience and following the Lord and his, the, the things that he has outlined for us to do, which are in the Old Testament. And so those things, those patterns of behavior that the Lord wants us to live by, they're not null and void because of Jesus. In fact, Jesus came to fulfill the law. And so discipline is um, a quality of being able to behave and work in a controlled way, which involves obeying a particular set of rules or standards. And it comes with self-control. Self-control is one of the fruit of the spirit. We see um, in Galatians 5, through 23, where it reads, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And 2 Timothy 1.7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of timidity, but of power, love, and of discipline. So some translations say power, love, and a sound mind, but there are other translations that replace sound mind with discipline. And we do need to be disciplined in our thought patterns, in our prayer life, in the way that we um, live our Christian walk. And the Lord is gracious to forgive us when we fall short. And there's always forgiveness when we fall short. But we should be striving to obey the Lord and his commandments because we love him. We are always motivated by love. Loving kindness is the character trait of God. And loving kindness should be a character trait of those who follow Jesus. So we want to have our mind prioritized properly. And we want to focus on the sovereign nature of God and his perfect purposes for our lives. God is eternal, and he, we are going to be with him in heaven, and he wants us to live our lives with a godly confidence and a wisdom in every situation. And the way that we gain godly wisdom and confidence is by being in his presence. And when we're in his presence, we have peace. So um, I want to talk about Romans 8.1 says, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So don't let guilt or shame keep you from coming to the Lord and being in right relationship with him. Like I said, there's always grace and forgiveness in the Lord. It's just that we have to keep coming back to him. Be honest with him where you struggle. Ask him to help you to get through those things. And then do what you can to make prayer time, you know, something that you are prioritizing and you'll find that the more you do it, the easier it is. Start with a small commitment and gradually make it bigger. But in these days, part of being prepared for what's going to come um, is involving the fact that we have to have a closer walk with him. So what's coming is a judgment on the earth and rank, wealth, they're not going to deliver us. No amount of power that we hold on the earth or material possessions or food stored up are going to protect us from what's coming. And so we really have to rely on the Lord, which puts us in a state of being vulnerable in a sense, but we might feel vulnerable, but we're not actually vulnerable when we're with the Lord. In fact, we're the safest we can ever be. And so the Lord is always preserving a faithful remnant. And so I want to remind you all that Hebrews 12, 5 through 6 says, My son, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord, nor be weary when reproved by him. For the Lord disciplines the one he loves and chastises every son whom he receives. So if the Lord is convicting you of something, consider it a gift that he is convicting you of that so that you can correct it and then grow in him, which will grow your faith and it will grow your trust in him as well. God wants nothing more than to grow us and he does it gently and he does it gradually as we walk with him and most of all he is good and he is love loving kindness defines the lord which is faithfulness graciousness mercy he is all these things 
and he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And so there are dark days coming. I expect the end of this year to be rough, and I expect 2025 to be worse. And truly, the only way to get through it safely and to get through it in the in the best way possible is to have the Lord, you know, be under his protection. And we need it more than ever. There are so many signs that these things around us are coming to pass. And we see that, you know, things are falling apart around us on a global scale. And so please turn to Jesus. Don't think about the physical things that you can do. Think about the spiritual ways that you can prepare and walk with the Lord and he will keep us under his wing. Thank you.